Hi, welcome to Desi Plaza TV. Nain Madhav. Ivan Amanta Pardu, Julie Johnson Garu Naru, who is actually competing for the House of Representative for District 115. Namaste, Julie. Hello, Naru. Namaste, Varakan. So, how are you doing, Julie? I'm well. How are you? I'm good, Julie. Doing good. So, Julie, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what are you contesting for? Well, I am a lawyer. I've been practicing law here in Dallas for about a little between 27 and 28 years. I own my own practice. I started um, with a large law firm in downtown Dallas, and then I, op I opened up my own firm in 1995. So I've had my own business for 23 years. I'm a mother. I have two sons. Uh, they are 15 and 18. My oldest son is a freshman at UMass in Amherst, so he's gone far away from me, and I'm having to, to face that. And my youngest son is a sophomore in high school, and I'm married. Uh, to a gastroenterologist. Uh, my wife practices in Fort Worth, and so we have to juggle family, work, politics, all of those things. So how many years have you been in politics? Well, I've been involved in the Texas Democratic Party for approximately 20 years now. I, um, in the late 90s, I guess when Al Gore was running for president, I decided to um, really step up my game. I've always been a donor, and I have contributed financially to many, many campaigns. But I started fundraising and I started becoming active and I've been on the finance committee for the Democratic National Committee for many presidential campaigns, for many, I've hosted many senators in my home and just been active on the fundraising side. I've also volunteered for different elections um, in, the, in the local area and throughout the many, many years. And this past session, um, I was very involved in the Hillary Clinton campaign. And after the election, I decided, you know, I needed to take my activism to another level. And for me, that was standing up and running for office. For many others, it's voting for the first time. Mm -hmm. Or it might be volunteering for a campaign for the first time. Mm -hmm. But I think all of us are on our own journey of political activism, of political awareness, and for me, that next level was to run for office. Why politics? I mean, what was the situation uh, that made you choose or made you enter into politics? Well, I think that, uh, you know, I have a voice. My life has brought me here. I have a political science and history degree from the University of Texas. Uh, I'm a lawyer, and so I certainly understand laws and the process of, of, of how they impact people, right? And so I understand very clearly the substance of what we do and how it impacts our society and, and the people in it. And so for me, it's an opportunity to put this whole culmination of life experience, of being an advocate for other people, of being a trial attorney and standing up and navigating the legal process on behalf of others, uh, to take it to this next step where you actually, I can have a, a meaningful impact in making the laws that affect people, not just litigating those laws. And so for it's just been a part of a life journey. You know, we all have those, right, in our life. Different experiences prepare us for things in our future. And I think the last um, 28 years of my working professional life has prepared me for this moment. And what is the difference that you see between you and your opponent? The differences between me and my opponent are vast. <laughs> um, I think uh, they, they range from a host of how we, we view the issues. He is a very conservative Republican that serves the religious right. I am a Democrat who serves all of our people. He believes in serving a small segment. I believe in serving everyone. And uh, and, and that's been manifested in a lot of the policies that he has chosen to uh, spearhead. For example, he led the charge on the Sanctuary Cities Bill. He's the, he's the person that called ICE on all of the protesters protesting that bill and made very racially charged assumptions that every one of them there were, had to be illegal in this country. You know, that no sane person, no legal person would possibly challenge this horribly discriminatory bill, right? He just made all of these assumptions and really displayed his blatant racism. 
And I personally uh, find that to be horrible and uh, would have behaved in a much different fashion. Okay. At this point of time, what do you think needs to be changed that your opponent is not doing? We need to, there's so many things that need to be changed. We need to work on our public education system. That is a critical priority. Uh, Texas is you know, the second largest economy in the country, the 10th largest economy in the world. We, have the four, we are ranked 42nd in education. That's just not acceptable. We have the resources, we have uh, the intellect um, and to, to do that, but we're not putting our resources, we're not putting our state priorities in making sure that we have a very, an excellent education system available to every, every child in this state. And that is a top priority. Healthcare is another top priority. Texas ranks 50 out of 50 in number of people with health insurance. We, have, uh, we are facing a health crisis. We do not have enough doctors. Uh, we need to open up more medical education. We need to provide more funding for, uh, for medical access for the poor. And that is an is epic problem. We also need to change just the civil discord. We need to create an, a, a government that works for all of our people and where everyone can feel that they are valued in this state not just a, a small minority. And so those are all issues that I want to work on in the legislature. And you are competing against your opponent who has already won a couple of times. So how yes. do you feel? I feel really good. You know, I'm really excited about our race and where things are. We have an unbelievable outpouring of support um, across all sorts of lines, you know, Republican and Democrat. I have the support of so many Republicans who are very tired and fed up uh, and, are, and do not appreciate the, the way that Rinaldi has represented this district. But we also have so many first time voters and some new communities who are realizing that politics matter, that your vote matters and people are registering to vote in record numbers and coming to join our campaign. And, we, and, and to express the rich diversity that this district has to offer is manifested in the volunteers in our campaign. And so we are really, really excited. There's been a lot of polls done. And within um, in this district, uh, this, this House 115 is catching the attention of quite a few folks. And we are up in all of the polls. And so we are very excited about uh, where we stand. We're very excited about our um, possibilities of winning in November and we're very confident that we will. So what qualities do you possess or what have you done professionally that you feel you can, you, you can run for this house? Well, I think my professional experience as a trial attorney really uh, make me well suited for this role. For one, you have to have a complete understanding of the laws and how they impact people and be able to navigate uh, complicated procedures and that's something I'm really looking forward to is being a procedural tactician navigating the rules to be able to enact really positive things and block very negative things. Also I have spent my career championing um, the needs and the voices of others. You know I've had some of my biggest cases have been helping those in the, the most vulnerable situation against really terrible situations and I think that that, that advocacy, that ability to stand up and advocate on behalf of someone, strategically navigate the process to how to get from A to Z, and is, is, has made me well suited. And also, you know, my, my trial practice is such that you have a cause and you have to get money to pay, uh, have people pay money for things they don't want to. Well, that's the legislature, right? <laughs> that's, it's about navigating funding and it's about that and then also in the last several years of my career I've been a mediator and that experience has been really helpful because I am very good at bringing both sides together to come up with common solutions and those are things that I'm really looking forward to and I think those skills will make me um, well suited to be very effective in the Texas legislature. Okay so what's on what's on your agenda and what do you think is most important for your district 115 at this point? Uh, to me, most, the most important thing is education and uh, funding our schools and paying our teachers. You know, we have a crisis with our retired teachers. They signed up to teach all of our kids math in the third grade, right, mm -hmm. or whatever, 
And in exchange for that, they, they got a lower base salary. Uh, they were not allowed to participate in Social Security. Okay. And the, the bargain that the government made with them, that the state made with them, is that we will take care of you in retirement. Okay. And so we have teachers who are living now on $2,000 a month that haven't had a pay raise in 15 years. Last 15 years. And their insurance premiums, the state is not um, adjusting its contributions to health insurance. They've redone the health insurance deal, and their health insurance takes at least half of their check, and they can't live on what's left. And the, the state has failed in its benefit of the bargain to the teachers. And if we don't, as a state, uphold our agreements, uphold the contracts that we make with people, how are we going to possibly attract the best and the brightest teachers? And we need the best and the brightest teachers in order to teach our kids. We've got to pay our teachers more. We have to be more competitive in that regard and, and give our schools the resources that it needs in order to be competitive across all the lines. Mm -hmm. You know, I have, um, I volunteer with a local school. After the election, I got very frustrated and wanted to, with politics, and wanted to uh, channel my efforts into another way. And so I reached out to DISD and said, tell me a school that needs some help that my law firm and, and other lawyers that I know we can be a corporate partner for. And so I did that. And you know, I went and I was able to be principal of a day and I got to go and tour the school oh, and go cool. in all of the classrooms. And the thing I noticed that was so disturbing to me, I went into their music classroom and they had no instruments. No instruments. They had plastic buckets. Oh. Well, for drums, for example. Oh, okay. Well, you know, and this was a, 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 a school that was had a hard, large minority population. You know, if you had gone down the street to a, a, a white school, they have instruments of every kind. But yet this school only has plastic buckets. Perfect. That is not okay with me. You know, and then a, another example is they had one computer for 30 students to share. That's bad. Versus in the other school, every kid has a computer. Mm -hmm. You know, and so we have to do a better job of making sure that all of our children have access to the same equipment, the same materials, so that they can succeed. And, it, and that is not happening in the current state of affairs. And what are your plans for the South Asian communities within your district? Well, you know, I am excited about the, the, the South Asian community. We have had a lot of meet and greets. We've had a lot of outreach. I have a lot of support from leaders within the community. But I think, like anything, the South Asian community is like every other community. We want our kids educated. We want to be able to go to the doctor. We want to be valued for the contributions that we have. We need an open immigration policy that doesn't discriminate against immigrants, that allows our families to come and encourages that. You know, uh, and so I think that it is just fundamental to our government of decency that we embrace the contributions that we all bring to this state and to this country. And to have people in elected office who value that, who will champion that, and who will speak to that day in and day out. And I will absolutely do that, and my opponent does not. He is just the opposite. He, his rhetoric, his language, his votes is all against our immigrant communities, does not value them, and we need a change. That is not okay in the state of Texas in 2018. And what kind of outreach have you done to reach the different communities within the district? Well, I've had multiple meetings with a lot of different folks. I've gone to people's homes. We've had meet and greets. We've blocked walk. We're knocking on doors, asking for people's votes. I've attended different events. And uh, so just really meeting people where they are. You know, it's mm -hmm. um, we can't just presume people are going to vote. We can't just assume we have to earn their vote. We have to go ask for their vote. And so that's what I'm doing in my campaign. We have um, a diverse member of volunteers, of campaign staff, and like I said, we're just going door to door, home by home, business by business, everywhere we can, event to event, to talk about our race, ask for people's votes, register people to vote, get people involved in the process. It's so important. And what do you, gain, what do you hope to gain personally with this experience? You know, it has been amazing. You know, the, I never appreciated just how impactful we can be in people's lives. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the riches for me have just been the gifts of just meeting so many fascinating, interesting people. And again, the, the realization that 
it just reinforces day in and day out that we are more alike than we are unalike, are the commonness of all of our humanity, and just that manifests itself in all these experiences. You know, I knock on um, uh, all these different doors that have, and everyone wants the same thing. We mm -hmm. all want the same things. I don't know anybody regardless of where you were born, the color of your skin, or who you worship, that doesn't want our children to be safe. I don't, you know, if anyone that doesn't want our kids, their kids to go to school and get the best education possible and to be safe there. I don't know anyone that doesn't want um, us to have a good doctor to go to when we're sick or the person who we love most on the earth is hurt. We want to be able to get them the care that they need regardless of any of those other things. And so that has been probably the best part of this whole process is just being able to come together, meet so many people, and again, reinforce the lessons that I've always known, but sometimes you just have to see them up close and personal again, just the commonness that we all share. And, and what is the biggest issue that you feel that the current people in your district are facing? And how, how do you plan to solve it? Well, you know, our district is very, very diverse. Uh, there are 78 different nationalities in this district. Right. It is the most, has one of the most diverse zip codes in the country. You know, this district has the largest number of apartments of any district in the state of Texas. So we um, have a lot to do. We need to focus on making all of our lives better, improving, like we've said many times now, our public education, but also public transportation, looking at the day in and day out services, job growth. People need to make sure that they can get hired and that we have an environment where um, discrimination does not rule, but merit and quality does. And that we have, and that comes from the top. When our top leaders in government promote discrimination and hate, then that transcends down. Versus when our top leaders in government promote inclusion uh, for all people and celebrate the diversity, that trickles down. And so I think that that is, is one of the biggest changes that we need to make, is have the leader and the representative of this district uh, represent all of its people. And what do you think is the difficult, or what do you think is the most important aspect that uh, would make you to win this race? Well, what's the biggest challenge or that you feel? The biggest challenge is voter apathy, is getting people to understand that their vote does matter and their vote does count for something. You know, I've, I've knocked on a lot of doors and said, well, I don't really vote. I'm like, why? Why don't you vote? It is so important. Okay. And well, it doesn't really matter. You know, there's, <laughs> I'm like, oh, it does. Well, I, you know, I'm the candidate and I'm telling you, your vote matters to me. So please go vote. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest challenges is, you know, people are busy. They are managing work. They're managing kids. They're managing their, managing their households. They've got soccer practice. They've got ballet practice. They've got to figure out how to go to the grocery store, how to get the laundry done. Oh, and by the way, pay the bills. And oh, my car's out of gas and ah. Uh, yeah. And they need a poster for the project at school and just on and on. And then, oh, yeah, my husband needs something, too, or whatever. You know, every women are busy. Uh, people are busy. And so getting them to realize, to take a moment out, to become informed of what's going on, uh, take that time to register to vote and go vote. It doesn't take long to register. It's literally five minutes. And it, you can be, if you go early vote when the lines aren't long, you can go in and out in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So 15 minutes out of your life and can make such an impact on your life. So it's the best 15 minutes you'll ever spend in terms of making things better for your kids. And But getting people to understand that is, that difficult is the biggest challenge. And because we have... Just like what we said, we have 78 different nationalities in this district, hmm. um, many of whom um, have not been act very active or involved or participate in the electoral process in very low percentages. Hmm. And we just have to do a better job of communicating about why their participation is important and earn their vote. And so that's what we're doing day in and day out, trying to go to everyone to earn your vote, earn your support, have you understand it's so important that you participate and hopefully vote for Julie. <laughs>
and what do you feel would be the difficult aspect to change after you have won the race um, well it's just going to depend on the makeup statewide of how many Republicans and Democrats we have in the legislature uh, in terms of how much of an impact the Democratic Party will be able to make so that's um, going to be an issue uh, in terms of what is our strength of vote so if we can flip the legislature and really turn out the Democratic base across the state then we can have a big impact um, if if we still are in the minority party then we just have to work really hard in our committees we have to work really hard advocating for really s strong legislation we have to be the kind of people who will work with our Republican colleagues reach across the aisle, who can bring people together and find really good solutions and get out of this entrenchment in far extreme partisan politics that we've been in. And we have to elect people who are committed to working with both sides so that we can get stuff done. That's, that's, that's the hardest thing is just um, the, is working with other people. And right now, in, in times past, the Republican Party has been so entrenched in its partisanship and unwilling to work with Democrats that it's, that's one of the reasons we're gridlocked and that's one of the reasons why we're not able to get as much stuff done as we need to. And so, and Rinaldi has been one of the leaders. He has blocked so many good bills. He's, he is Mr. No. He led this thing called the Mother's Day Massacre and killed like 100 bills and really upset a lot of people who've been working really hard to get things done. So we need to um, vote out of office people who are obstructionists um, like Rinaldi and others and elect people to office who are committed to um, working on, a, on good bills regardless of who offers them, voting against bad bills regardless of who offers them, you know, focus on the, on the good for the state of Texas and our people and then we can get some stuff done. What was the difficult situation that you have faced in your lifetime? Was there a situation, was there a challenge? Uh, what was a challenge that you have faced um, in your life? You know, it's interesting uh, because we have so many of those, but I guess one of those, I have several, uh -huh. uh, but one would be just getting my first job. You know, I graduated uh, from law school in 1991 and I wanted to be a trial attorney, go into the courtroom and try cases. And so many law firms at that time did not hire women in their litigation section. Mm -hmm. And that was very frustrating to me. And, uh, and so, but I did, I, I got a wonderful job with a, a great law firm, a big law firm here in downtown Dallas, in that building that lights up green at night. I was all excited to go to work my first day. But they had women, they valued women, and they valued women uh, and recognized that we could be really effective litigators. So there's that. And then I think secondly, um, the adoption of my children. Um, I adopted them from another country. And so I had to navigate the immigration process to bring my kids to the US and incorporate them into life here. They didn't speak English, they spoke another language. Mm -hmm. And having to um, get them through the education system and to a school uh, where they could learn and be successful. Because um, my oldest son was almost four and he had not had any ed, um, education of any sort, didn't know how to count, didn't have any reading, didn't know anything. Uh, he had been in an orphanage and had not been provided any service. And so just really having to navigate that, uh, getting them, in, you know, what's the right school for them? How, will they address their needs? Will they bring them up? Will they be able to maintain their academic self-confidence in this process, not just shut in a corner because they weren't at the same level as the other kids and all of those things. And so um, just having to be a parent uh, through that process um, was very interesting and very challenging, um, but very rewarding at the same time because, you know, I love my baby boys and they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're all big now, well, but they're, yeah. um, but just, I think probably those two things. Are the biggest challenges. <laughs> now this question is about racism. So do you feel that it has increased in the last few years? I do. I, you know, well, I think that racism, I think what's happened is, I don't know if it's increased as much as it is people have come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that the, the, the racial spotlights that have happened on us in our national politic have opened that dialogue and it's forced people to face 
uh, racism and force people to, you know, express their feelings. And so what we see is we've seen more people who uh, have racist beliefs express those. And so it seems that there is more racism because it seems to be uh, more appropriate to express that. But at the same time, we've also seen as a lot of people express the views of that racism is not okay. They're also finding their voice. And they're also finding the voice that uh, we have to stand up. And I think, um, so what we've seen is just that it's, the, the cover has been, the blanket that's hidden it, what's been there the whole time is off. And everyone's talking about it. And it, we're seeing it for the ugly side that it is. And the people who are expressing that have had more confidence in expressing that. But the backlash for that is those, those of us that, that believe deeply that that is not okay, that racism is completely inappropriate in our society, are also speaking up and are also finding their voice. And I think that it is engaging our electorate. People from immigrant communities who face racism every day are realizing that it is so important to become involved and to, and to squash this down because that is the minority view in this country. The majority of our people believe that we should have equality for all people, regardless who you love, where you're born, who you worship, the color of your skin. We believe those fundamentally and deeply. There's a segment of our population that differs from that, but that is not the majority view. And the majority of our people need to stand up together, embrace one another and reject that outright. And one of the ways you can do that is vote out any leader in this elected office who espouses racial beliefs, racist beliefs. They have no business being in elective office. And it's up to the voters to send that message. I was about to ask you how are you going to solve it, but you answered it. <laughs> <laughs> so how and what are you, are you planning to do to make Texas a better and a safe place to live? Well, I think, um, you know, we need to have, uh, I think, gun sense regulations. We need to improve safety um, in our schools. Um, we need to reform cr our criminal justice system. Um, we need to do a lot of things in terms of addressing those sorts of things. But I think also at the core end of the day, in terms of safety in an immigrant community, is just this notion that we all deserve to be here and we all are entitled to be here and we all deserve to live it to our fullest capacity and we have to have laws that protect us uh, and and enforce those but i you know i think that it's just clear that so many people get it the messages from our leadership or the rhetoric that we speak the language the words that we use and people feed off of that. And, but we can't tolerate hate. We can't tolerate hate crimes. I think the hate crimes laws need to be fully enforced. Um, they're on the books to protect uh, vulnerable communities from hate and hate-related uh, criminal activity, and they need to be aggressively enforced, in my opinion. And the last one for the day. So it's like uh, you, you talked about those guns, right? So, and recently we have uh, had many cases about the guns in schools wherein uh, they were, so how do you take that and how do you make sure that within the, your district we, we, we don't find any, e not even a single case you observed? Well, you know, I've met with uh, several folks from the school boards and um, who are in our elected office to keep our children safe in the schools about what we need to do and what recommendations there are. and. Um, I do not favor arming teachers. I think that that is a bad move. And teachers don't want to be armed. They want to teach kindergarten. They don't want to have a gun. Um, but there are things that we can do. I think we can protect the entrances, secure them. So many of our schools here in Carrollton Farmers Branch and Coppell and Irving don't have secure entrances to at least keep, regulate who comes and goes within the school buildings. Um, but one of the things is uh, they're all clamoring for more dollars to hire more guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough psychological assistance and guidance care in our schools to, to see troubled students, 
to see it before it ever gets there. You know, our guidance counselors are seeing, you know, it's one to like 300 students. Hmm. How, ca how can you possibly, you know, see a troubled child with those kinds of numbers and, and then intervene before it gets there? So I think there's a lot of other things that we can do and um, that we can help protect that. That, that, that don't go as far as arming our teachers because I don't I think that that's not a good solution <laughs> that's definitely not so <laughs> so it was really nice talking to you Julie and uh, hope you'll definitely win the race all the best and uh, congrats I mean like all the best from the DC Plaza TV viewers and from Storio thank you so very much it's been my honor to be here and I so appreciate your support and please vote early vote starts October 22nd you can go anywhere in Dallas County and vote. Please vote. It's very, very important. And vote for Julie. Thank you so much. So Julie, we'll take a break over here and we'll be right back. Okay, thank you so much.